What's up? I'm back. In this segment, I'm going to talk about the brain and the stomach and why diet is important. A lot of people in the, I could say, you could say new age community, but you could say the esoteric community, always talk about the power of thought. And thought is extremely powerful, obviously. You know, mental energy is kind of what really holds the universe together in a lot of ways. So thought is very important. The thing that happens, though, is that, you know, sometimes people used to say, you have some people who say, well, you know, it said in the Bible, we made it in man's image and likeness. Or like God created man in his image and likeness. And sometimes people would debate what exactly the image is. Is it racial? Is it a gender? But the real, and the real truth in, in, the, in the world of esoteric lore, they always knew. When they, when they spoke about image and likeness, they were really talking about mind of God. Man has the humankind has the ability to modify things, to change things, to actually make it better. So humanity, uh, let's say human alchemists, can take gold and make it into monotonic gold, or they could take a substance like mercury, which is poisonous, and make it into medicine, which can extend their life to years that may seem like sci science fiction. The human mind has the ability to do that. So sometimes when they talk about like the, being like the child of God, it was really the mind. And that's very important because the mind itself is very hard for a lot of people to understand. The interesting thing is the stomach is actually a second mind. That's the big one of the big secrets people don't realize. That's actually why diet, well, diet, there's a reason why, there's a lot of reasons why diet's important. But that was a, a huge reason, reason why diet was important was because your mind is so powerful. Even when you're watching this video now, you see things that, like, for instance, your logical mind is hearing the words. Right, but there's other things going on that your subconscious mind picks up on. So in a lot of ways, your sub there's a lot of things that's going on with your brain that you can't control. If you touch water, you can feel it. You don't really tell the nerves in your hand to to help you feel it. It just or does it automatically. So in a lot of ways, sometimes your brain is processing information sometimes beyond what your logical mind is capable of even handling. But the stomach is a secondary brain, and in a sense, the stomach can actually influence the big brain. So you ever had, for instance, like you ever had like a feeling in your gut and something's wrong and you don't know what it is? That's your brain sending a signal to the stomach and the, the stomach picks it up. And even though the brain can't, the logical brain can't process what the subconscious mind is, wants it to know, it shoots it to the stomach and the stomach processes it. And then you know something is wrong to be alert. It's the same, the same thing in a sense. When you have diet, your stomach, you could big, the stomach is really the brain that you could control totally. And you can control with your diet. Whatever you put in is what you get out. And in a sense, because the stomach can also influence the, the subconscious mind or the brain, you could almost, in a sense, eat something and you could actually have a mental response from the food that you're eating, which is very crucial. Because in a sense, that's why diet was important. Because, of course, there's health reasons to it. But metaphysically, once you know the power of thought, you can actually control it or, or you could help kind of push it a certain way with your diet which is a crucial factor many people miss and in a sense the stomach as a secondary brain is very important because you know that's getting into gut flora and the bacteria in your stomach and i've already made a few videos about that but it's, it's crucial to understand it though because even in let's say alchemy a good example if an alchemist wants to do like an like something related to one of the planets right like venus what would they do? In Spirogyrix, they would make a Venus elixir and drink it. And when they drink it, on the Venus hour, maybe on a Friday, they kind of amplifying that energy. And, it's, and then it goes to the stomach, but then the stomach sends a signal back to the blood, which then goes back to the brain. And eventually, they, they were able to kind of, don't look at it as cheating, but able to kind of help push the subconscious mind to where they wanted the subconscious mind to go. Could the subconscious mind being older in terms of the subconscious mind really actually passes on information from ancestors gets stored in subconscious mind. The information from your past lives gets stored in your subconscious mind. So in a lot of ways, it's a bit older than your logical mind in terms of the information it has access to. A lot of times you can't tell the subconscious mind what you want. You have to kind of hint it at it. You have to kind of suggest it. And hence why in psychology they have auto-suggestion. You actually have to kind of do it either over and over and over again or do it in such a creative way that your subconscious mind responds to it. So diet 
was basically one of the ways alchemists of the past were able to kind of influence the subconscious mind. They wanted to get into Venus. You drink a Venus elixir on a Venus hour, on a Friday. Simple, but most people don't understand the relationship between the stomach and the mind. So understanding how the stomach works, how the small intestines works, how the gut flora and and how the gut flora in you works, is extremely important for your diet, but also for your spiritual progress. Hope this helps. Till next time. Peace.